Yo! So a while ago, Gan posted a contest on their Instagram to win one of their Gan 356Ms. Wait, what's it called a contest? A tester recruitment. Well, it's a contest, let's be honest. So I applied for that, and a few 10 days later, I got messages from people saying that I won. Woohoo! Now, the funny thing is, the moment when they announced the winners, I was just about to upload my using Little Magic video, where I state that I performed better on the Little Magic than the GAN 356X. Gans last year's flagship. In other words, urging people to buy a budget cube over a GAN cube. So I was like, oh, they're giving me a free cube and I respond by stabbing them right in the back? I don't know, I thought it was kind of ironic. But anyways, when I received the cube after a bit over a month of waiting because it came from China, I was really impressed by it. It truly feels like a GAN flagship, but it isn't. This one is. I don't know why I showed you the box, I could have just shown the cube, but anyways. When you can get a great performing GAN cube for only 30 bucks, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people questioning whether you should pay twice as much for the XS. Cause spoiler, the biggest difference between the two cubes has to be their price. The GAN 356 XS is $60, while the GAN 356M is $32. Or it's even $27 if you get the light version. Or even less if you use discount code CUPAT on thecubicle.com. Wow. It is cheaper, try it for yourself. Anyways, let's start by talking about the build. I was surprised to find out that the build quality of the M is exactly the same as the XS. They both are extremely lightweight, with the XS being just a tiny bit lighter, but I can't tell a difference to be honest. Actually, let's try. I'm just switching the cues. Let's see. I would say this one is the XS. No, it's the M, so I cannot tell the difference. It, they're both really light, just take it from me. Gan is really pushing to make lighter cubes at this point, and I don't know if I'm like a real fan of that. I don't feel like reducing the weight of a cube makes it better. I kind of like solid heavier cubes as well. Good old days of the GDS2 and the Volk. What do you think about lighter cubes? Let me know in the comments, I would love to hear your opinion as well. Anyways, back to the cubes, I keep getting sidetracked. They both have the new plastic looking core. They both have the same second generation honeycomb design. Their stickerless versions have the same type of frosted plastic, which yes, is slippery out of the box, but it gets way better if you use it a lot. I really like it. I know some people don't, but hey, it looks sick as well, right? By the way, you only have the option to go stickerless on the XS, so you cannot get a stickered version with the M. No one dislikes this, but I'm just sharing it with you. So I don't have the stickered version of the XS, but I will edit it in so you can form a better judgment. You like it? To summarize, I would say that the build quality of both puzzles is identical, and that can be quite surprising knowing that the XS is twice the price. No pun intended. Although, if I really had the nitpick, I could say that the box of the XS is slightly cooler. Can you see that? Like the magnets, they kind of reflect. I don't know, it's really cool. Does it matter? Hell no, I don't think there's anyone who would pay twice the price just for a better looking box, right? The real difference in price unfolds itself when we talk about the next point, customizability. Yeah, we need a new word for that. The GAN 356XS is really customizable. It has three magnet strength settings, six levels of elasticity, and four kinds of nut distances, which is nuts. The GAN 356M, on the other hand, is not that customizable. It comes with fixed magnets, which I think are really great. They're on the medium side, but I would say they're slightly stronger. I think they're awesome. It comes with four sets of GES springs, which all have two travel distance settings. However, if you get the light version of the cube, you will only get the blue GES springs, which are relatively fast. But if you like fast cubes, you might as well just get that cube and save yourself some money. Saving money is good. The question now is, do you need the myriad of customization options that the XS provides? Valentin asked me to test the tightest and loosest settings of both cubes, and I kind of like that idea, so let's try it. All right, so right now I have both cubes on the loosest tensions. For the M, I use the purple GES nuts on number 0.8. Now the magnets are not adjustable. Now for the XS, the magnets are on the loosest setting. And right now I have number four for the dark blue thingies. And yeah. All right, so let's see which one is the loosest. So yeah, it is extremely fast, of course, but I feel like it's still 
kind of controllable and maybe this is due to the magnets i actually think people might like this now for the excess oh god it almost feels like it's falling apart man i think i can do like a u4 this one that's like a u5 like okay this is this is not usable i don't think anyone would use this setting all right so now i have both cubes on tied setting which means yellow nuts in 0.6 light blue number one and like the tightest tension and also the magnets are on the strongest side right now so let's start off with the m so yeah now the cube is super controllable actually and i think the corner cutting is still decent i wouldn't use it like this i would put it like one setting less tight but it's it's okay it's actually really good now for the excess I feel like the corner cutting on this one has become worse than the M. Yeah, definitely. So this one is tighter. I think that the magnets right now are stronger as this one. Before they were still decent, but right now they're like a bit too strong, maybe? I think the tightest setting on both puzzles is kind of comparable. Although the excess has to be like a bit tighter, I think. But actually, I like the tighter setting of the excess more than the M. So if you like controllable cubes, I like this setup more than this one. I'm not going to go in detail about how their systems work, but I do have to say that I think the customization system of the excess is the best out of all the cubes at the moment, in my opinion. But then again, even if you can't tweak the M as much as the excess, I don't know if you really need to super precise customizations, because at the end of the day, no cube is going to fit you right away. It's not just you adjusting the cube, you need to adjust as well. I don't know if that made sense, but I think that the GAN 356M's spring system is just fine. But if you are really about that fine tuning, then yeah, get yourself an excess, because you can do everything with it. With that being said, if you don't like magnets on the stronger side, then the M is probably not your cube, because I have to say that the magnets are kind of strong, unless you break out the magnets. Which I don't advise you to do, but if you do so, let me know how that went, but don't do it. I did not advise you to. But now probably the most important factor, what does all of this mean in terms of performance? I have to be honest, in the beginning I didn't perform great using either of them. As I said before, usually I like more solid heavier cubes, but both of these cubes are extremely light and fast. But I actually took some time to try to adjust to the feeling. I used angstrom loops to make them more controllable. By the way, I think those loops go extremely well with the GAN cubes, so if you're looking for loops for your GAN cube, make sure to give that a try. And then I think I did about a thousand souls on both cubes. And I have to say, I've grown to love them, like a lot. There really isn't anything like the feel of a GAN. And both cubes excel at being GAN cubes. And this may sound a bit trivial, but for example, the GAN 356 RS, I tried that cube and I didn't like it. It didn't feel like a GAN to me. So knowing that we have this kind of budget cube, the M, that performs this great, that's awesome news. Now to try to explain where both cubes differ, I quickly want to talk about forgivingness, which I define as the ability to not lock up while turning inaccurately. And this mostly depends on corner cutting, but I'm not talking about how far it cuts. What I think is more important is that is how easily it cuts the smaller degrees, let's say 10 degrees or something like that. And there the excess really shines. It's a super forgiving cube, which kind of surprises me because I usually lock up more using GAN cubes, but not this one. The M on the other hand feels more blocky in my opinion, less forgiving. As for which one is faster, the M or the excess? I really can't tell. I think it mostly depends on the settings and the loops you use. Although I tend to think that the M is a bit more smoother than the XS, while the XS has the ability to be way faster. I actually did an average of 50 on both cubes, and my times were really similar using both of them. I got slightly better averages on the XS, and that might be because I was locking up less, but it wasn't a huge deal, so I wouldn't really say that I performed way better using the XS. I just think that it fits my aggressive turning style a bit better. But now, to answer the title, should you pay twice as much for the excess? Well, it depends. If you like stronger magnets and have a quiet, accurate turning style, get the 356M. Even more so, if you like really fast cubes, get the light version of the 356M. 
If you want to have a GameCube but don't have that big of a budget, get the 356M as well because it's really, really good. I think right now it has the best value out of all GameCubes. It's kind of a bold statement, but I really think it's true. That might change in the near future because the Monster Go Cubes, quite exciting. I hope to do a video about them soon. And lastly, if you're thinking about buying the GAN 356X, don't buy it, just get the M. It's, it's almost the same cube. Except if you don't like the frosted plastic and you really want to switch your magnets, then you should buy the X, but there's no other reasons to buy the X over the M. As for the XS, I don't know if you have noticed, but the logo of the XS has faded for a reason. It has become my main. I don't think it will be on the shelf for a long time, because I don't want to be a normie. But yeah, I love it the most out of all cubes I have. If you have a higher budget and if you're all about the fine tuning, or if your subscribers bully you because you don't have the newest flagship GAN yet, get yourself the XS. Because in my opinion, it is the best GAN cube on the market right now. But be aware, it is super light and the frosted plastic might not be your thing. I like it, but just try it yourself first before you're going to mortgage your house to buy it. So yeah, that was it for this video. If you have any more questions regarding the puzzles, just leave it in the comments and I will, I will respond to all of them. Challenge accepted. Anyways, if you like this video, make sure to give it one. And if you want to see more of me, please subscribe. It's awesome and it's free. I should get paid for this, really. Anyways, I guess I will see you in the next video. Ciao.